Are you having a hard time determining how to get started with preparing your company for NIST SP800-171 compliance? If you are a small business and are unsure where to begin, then keep watching and we'll help you get started. Welcome to the Baseline channel and let's get you started on the right path. If you are a government contractor, then you have probably been hearing a lot about the NIST SP800-171 and the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification or CMMC. If you are not familiar with these two documents, then please take a look at our videos regarding them both. The new guidance for the CMMC was made available to the public on 30 August 2019. The new guidance provided more detailed information on the five levels of the CMMC. According to the guidance, there are 35 controls that must be implemented or at least conducted on an as-needed basis. During this video, we will select 5 of the 35 controls and provide guidance on how to implement them in your network. The first control we will explore is Control 3.1.1, Limit Information System Access to Authorized Users, Processes Acting on Behalf of Authorized Users or Devices or at least on an as-needed basis. This means that you should only allow authorized users access to your systems and or devices. The following scenario will describe one method of how to get compliant with this control. You have a new employee arriving for their first day at work at your company. In order to meet this control, you should do the following when creating their user account. The supervisor of the new employee should approve the creation of the employee's user account in writing. The supervisor should be provided with a user request form that details what the employee will be doing and what accesses the employee will need in order to conduct their daily duties. Finally, the company will maintain a listing of each authorized individual along with all the accesses that each individual is authorized to have. This control focuses on how each user account is authorized, created, maintained, and monitored until each employee leaves the company. The second control we will explore is 3.1.8, Limit Unsuccessful Login Attempts. This is one of the simpler controls to implement. A great example of this control is the PIN on your debit card. If you type in the wrong PIN at an ATM, it will eventually lock you out of your account after a predetermined number of attempts, and you will have to contact your bank in order to unlock it. This is the exact same control and you will have to set up your authentication system to do the same. For example, if you use passwords to log in, you should configure all user accounts to lock out after a predetermined number of attempts. The third control we will explore is Control 3.1.22. Control information posted or processed on publicly accessible information systems. When this control refers to publicly accessible systems, it is referencing your company website and company social media accounts. Your company should designate a webmaster to keep these sites updated. To meet this control, your company should also designate someone else to authorize what can be posted on these sites and ensure that no CUI is posted on these sites. You can simply identify both individuals in writing and develop a documented process of how each will perform their duties. In addition, ensure that all authorized individuals are trained annually on CUI procedures and ensure the public systems are reviewed periodically to ensure no CUI has been posted on them. The fourth control we will explore is Control 3.3.1. Create, protect, and retain information system audit records to the extent needed to enable the monitoring, analysis, investigation, and reporting of unlawful, unauthorized, or inappropriate information system activity. This is one of the more complex technical controls because there are many moving parts required in order to meet compliance. Everything a user does while using a computer can be tracked and analyzed. You can track all activities like when users log in, what files are accessed, what websites are visited, what files were created, deleted, and etc. The first part of this control is creation. In order to track or monitor these activities, you must first ensure the auditing feature is enabled or turned on for all hardware and software applications so that the systems will generate the logs. These logs are called audit logs. An audit log is another name for an activity log. The second part of this control is protection. You must protect these logs from being accessed, modified, or changed by unauthorized individuals. This can be accomplished by sending logs real-time, or, as the activities occur, to a location where only authorized individuals have access. For example, you can set up a log server with the third-party organization 
and configure your log system to send the files to this file server. This process ensures that the activities of your system administrator, who by the way has all of the power to do anything with your systems, are also tracked so that if this person were to do something malicious, he or she would not be able to delete the logs or to hide their malicious actions. The logs should also be encrypted to protect the integrity of the information. The third part of this control is to retain the logs. In order to meet the intent, you will need to develop a predetermined time frame to keep the logs. For example, six months before deleting the old logs. Together, you meet the intent of this control just in case someone commits a malicious act or an attack. The logs can be used to conduct the investigation to determine what happened, who did it, and so on. The fifth control we'll explore is Control 3.14.4. Update malicious code protection mechanisms when new releases are available. In order to meet the intent of this control, you must have some type of malicious code protection on your system. An example of malicious code would be a virus. Malicious code is basically code that can harm your system. Using an antivirus solution would be a protective measure to defend your systems against malicious code. The intent of this particular control is for you to make sure that if you use an antivirus or other malicious code protection defense, then you must monitor the updates through the developer and make sure that you apply any updates when they are made available. For example, if you use Norton antivirus, you should make sure you are always updating it to use the most current version. In summary, we'd like to recap what we talked about. The new CMMC guidance has provided an initial baseline, pun intended, of 35 controls to achieve a level 1 certification. We briefly covered 5 of the 35 controls and provided examples of how to meet the intent. If you have any questions about the 5 controls we covered or any of the 35 controls, you can email us with questions at information at baselineba.com. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Please post any questions or inputs below and we'll address them in a future video. Thank you.